Welcome to the Widget Designer First Grade Training. This class will cover the following aspects of the free version of Widget Designer. Usage and setup of different control elements, overview of basic scripting language, communication with Pandora's box, customizing the interface, simple interaction. You will learn the basic functionalities and principles of Widget Designer while creating a simple but versatile video jockey application. A program to easily control a connected Pandora's box software as a VJ console. All files and media needed to complete this training are available as a download link in the video description as well as the web links mentioned during this course. Widget Designer was originally a software designed to interface Pandora's box with the rest of the world. A way to simplify the usage of Pandora's box without needing to access the complex GUI, to automate processes to provide control over Pandora's box for other applications and devices, and to enable Pandora's box to control third-party hard and software in an installation or show environment. Since it was first released in 2008, Widget Designer has evolved into a powerful tool for all kinds of control scenarios, even without Pandora's box. It is able to receive, process and send a large variety of control protocols and messages. You can create your own GUI with elements like buttons, faders, panels and so on, all completely customizable. The internal scripting is simple enough to enable you to write your own scripts quickly, even without previous programming experience, but flexible enough to enable you to write complex functions and tasks when your level of skill rises. There are three different editions of Widget Designer. The free version, which does not require a license dongle, the regular version, and the unlimited version. You can download the latest installer that contains all three versions from the Pandora's Box website. For installing Widget Designer you require the .NET Framework version 4.8, which you can also find in the Download Center. All tasks within the first grade training can be performed with the free version of Widget Designer. If you have Pandora's Box menu installed, you can add the link to the Widget Designer executable in the configuration menu. Widget Designer can communicate to many different devices, but of course it is a Pandora's Box application. So it is a great enhancement of features for the Pandora's Box Manager and gives a huge amount of control possibilities. For this training, you can use any manager license. If you have a license dongle, you can use it. If not, the Pandora's Box Manager demo version is suitable for this training. Please find a project file to download here. For some additional media loop content, please use the following download link. These can be used to give your programming a bit of color when working in the Pandora's Box Preview tab. Of course, you also can program Pandora's Box Manager yourself. Please get a video visible on Video Layer 1. Or use the project file and jump the sequence now pointer to the first queue, Fader Control. Many software applications provide an SDK, a software development kit that enables any third-party applications to communicate with it and offers remote control and feedback possibilities. The Pandora's Box Master software has an SDK that utilizes either a TCP or a UDP connection for data exchange. TCP and UDP are IP-based Ethernet communication protocols that use predefined ports. Once the connection is established, they provide a bidirectional connection and both applications can share data and or commands, 
based on the implementation of each one. Commands for Pandora's box always have to address the master application, which controls all connected clients. As you can have many instances of Pandora's box or widget designer running on the same network at the same time, you need to assign each widget designer a specific Pandora's box application to control. To do so, you will find the settings for the Pandora's box network configuration in the menu Connections. Pandora's box configuration. Use the master connection to type in the IP address of the master device. Check the use local IP box if master and widget designer are on the same computer and keep in mind to adjust the Pandora's box domain if you are using anything besides zero. Faders, buttons, labels, etc. are called widgets. They can be accessed via the menu the toolbar or a right-click on the surface. Widgets are elements used to provide a visual control interface for the user. To create a fader widget, please click on the fader symbol or use the menu bar. By choosing a fader, the mouse icon changes to a plus symbol to indicate the create mode. Click somewhere inside the UI area to add the widget at the mouse pointer's position. There are three different modes. The run mode is used for actually operating the interface of the project you have created. You can switch to run mode by clicking on the play symbol in the toolbar or by pressing the F8 key. It is indicated by the regular mouse pointer. The Edit Move mode is used to access the properties of the widgets, edit their settings and arrange the elements in your interface. You can click on the Next button in the toolbar or press F9. The mouse pointer changes to a crosshairs icon. The Create mode will be applied automatically if you click on a widget Create button or select a new widget from the menu bar. A double click on the fader while in move or create mode opens the item properties window. Alternatively, you can perform a right click in any mode and select fader properties. Each widget has a unique name and ID. Names and IDs are ongoing by default. The name represents the identifier of this object and needs to be unique throughout the whole project. The ID serves the same purpose, but it is only unique within each group of widgets. All widgets are resizable. Selecting a widget while in move mode will show a blue selection box. By grabbing the lower right part with a mouse click, you can easily change its size. As you can see, the respective values in the Properties dialog are updated immediately. You also can define the exact size and location by entering the pixel values directly. Now open the Fader Control drop-down in the Properties window here you find the settings to directly access a Pandora's box layer or sequence. For addressing device 1 on site number 2, enter 2.1 in the devices and select opacity from the parameter drop-down menu. Make sure to use a period between the site and device IDs, not a comma. The opacity in Pandora's Box Manager is an 8-bit value, which means that it ranges from 0 to 255. Please make sure the minimum and maximum values for the fader are set to that range. Natively, the fader widget provides a decimal value. 
The Widget Designer Second Grade Training will give you an overview of different kinds of value types. After applying the settings and changing back to Run Mode, the fader directly controls the opacity parameter in the Pandora's Box Manager. Widget Designer is an HTML-based application. The back-end is doing all the processing. Front-end, the graphical user interface you are working on, displays all the widgets and controls. As it is all HTML5 code, you can easily integrate any third-party HTML5 web designs. It also can use CSS for unique design, effects and even animations. The next step is to create a custom script button. You can find this button in the widgets menu bar under buttons or you can directly click the second button from the toolbar. Another method to create widgets is to perform a right click inside the UI. Select widgets, buttons and finally the custom script button. After each of these progressions, Widget Designer will automatically change to Create mode. You can now add as many custom script buttons into your UI as you like. If you have accidentally created too many buttons, you can change to Move mode. Select any unneeded elements and press the Delete key. A right click on any widget and selecting Delete from the pop up menu is another method to remove objects from the UI. After creating the custom script button, please open the item properties of it by right-clicking and choosing item properties or double-click the button while in move mode. The custom script button is one of the most powerful tools in Widget Designer. Initiated by user interaction, it can perform any script. The head section of the properties dialog is identical for all widgets. It contains a unique name, which is per default automatically created. A widget ID, size and position data. There are different options in the settings and the button styles dropdowns. These settings contain different options to directly address Pandora's Box master application button behavior and the design of the button. You can skip these for now and have a look at the scripting fields instead. There are four different scripting fields available. The first one, the on-press script, is executed when the custom script button goes into the pressed state. The script within the second field is executed when the button state changes from pressed to released. The third and fourth script the on mouse enter and leave scripts react to the mouse pointer or touch points entering the custom script button area or leaving it respectively. You can use any of these scripting fields depending on which interaction you want to trigger. You also can use all of them at once. The script language of Widget Designer was created to be intuitive and usable by operators who are not experienced in any programming languages. The commands all have a certain pattern that enables you to easily find the correct one for the action you want to perform. One of the most used scripts is for example the command letting a fader fade up or down. See what happens when you type the word fader in the on-press script window. The inline help called Script Assist will show you all possible commands which include the word fader. Now choose the command WD fader up via arrow keys or mouse. The Script Assist provides keywords, commands, parameters, examples and a description of the selected command. When you press Enter, the command will be added to the position of your cursor. Here you can see the structure of the command. The first part, WD, indicates that you want to address something within Widget Designer. Some commands addressing Pandora's box have a PB in front of them respectively. 
The second section tells you which object you are addressing, in this case a fader. Other commands can, for example, address a label or a custom script button. And the last section indicates the action that the specified object is supposed to perform. Here it is to fade up. But your command is not yet completed. It still requires some information to specify the action to be performed. The parameters. In this case you need to enter the ID of the fader and a fade time in seconds. Imagine you had multiple fader widgets in your project, the command would not know which specific fader to fade, without knowing the ID. The inline help also supports you by indicating the missing entry and its specification by blue marks. Enter the fader widget ID. This should be 1 for the current project. The parameter value integer describes that only whole numbers are allowed. Multiple parameters are separated by a comma. If you look at the script assist, it indicates that there is another parameter missing. Seconds. This parameter has to be entered as double value, which is a decimal number. This means that you can also have a fade time of 2.5 seconds if needed. Enter a number here, for example 2 seconds, and terminate the command with the close bracket. This bracket is important. Without it, the script will not work. If you have multiple widgets on your user interface and you want to find out which ID you have to address, just turn on the move mode. The IDs are displayed in the top left corner of each widget. Now change back into run mode by pressing F8 or clicking the play button in the toolbar. If you hit the custom script button, the fader is moving from minimum to maximum value in the time you entered in the fade script. Before you can execute the script again, you have to pull down the fader manually or, if you want to, enter a fade down script in a new button.